welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. And I'm also your host, Noelle McAvoy. Good morning, everyone, and yes. a happy Friday! Yes, there's a lot going on today, especially this morning. Um, if you um, haven't already heard that um, MCAT will be streaming the um, the Supreme um, uh, Supreme Court uh, water hearing yep. about the Mountain Water, future of the Mountain Water Company, and that starts at 8.30 mm -hmm. this morning. And hopefully by then, hopefully we get to that point where we're able to show you a little bit of that during our live broadcast of Wake Up Missoula, which is from 8 to 9. Oh my gosh! And, I can't wait! It's going to be great. And also today is another special day because it's um, uh, it's a certain birthday. It is a certain yes. birthday. It's a birthday. Our birthday. Cat's birthday. Today is Earth Day and 26 years ago was the creation of MCAT. So, uh, happy birthday MCAT at 26 years. Still growing strong. Mm -hmm. We're great. Yeah. I love this place. Yeah. But you guys can grow strong and go outside. Yep. Scott's got the weather. Yes, What's so, it going to be like? Well, the weather is looking nice today, but of course, later on tonight and throughout the weekend, you can expect some thunderstorms Ooh. happening. So today's going to be partly sunny with a chance of thunderstorms, but it's going to be a high of 78. But then again, um, by the weekend, it's going to it's going to go to a high of 53. So okay. we're going to lose about 20 degrees on the high end for this weekend. Which is good for us because this weekend is our stop animation drop in. It so, sure for $10, is. your kid for age 9 to 13 can come in, learn some stop animation, help make movies, and just overall have a great experience working with other kids in production. It's a lot of fun, yeah. And so, the first couple hours, we do uh, stop motion animation. We make them do it. And the last two hours, we do some live action because, you know, they can only do stop motion for so long, they get burnt out. Um, but yeah, it's a really great time. So, and then if you guys don't want to stay the whole time from one to five, you can just stay from three to five or one to three, and it's only five dollars. And of course, if you um, want to know some of the videos that the kids have made tonight at six thirty um, on MCAT Channel Eight One Eighty Nine, we're we'll be showing um, an array of shorts okay. from th um, this year's um, stop animation. So, without further ado, I'm just going to give you a little taste of this, and when we come back, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about more about programming and where you can. Find out more information about Wicked Missoula.
Really? Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> With a lovely uh, dose of violence for your Friday morning. The um, kids are so creative and so smart. I just love them. Um, yeah, they, we have a lot of stuff. There's definitely a lot of stuff going on um, here yeah. at MCAT, especially for our Saturday drop-ins. Mm -hmm. And y if you want to learn more information about our Saturday drop-ins, you can log on to website MCAT.org. You can like us on Facebook. You can totally like <laughs> us on Facebook. That'll pop up when you log into our Facebook page, MCAT.org. Nice little thing where you can watch some city council, um, um, make your own shows, um, stop drop, sorry, drop in like I just mentioned, yep. and uh, we're on YouTube. Yep. All our stuff is on YouTube, and of course, if you're interested in being our, uh, having your kid or young adult interested in our um, summer programs, we have um, a zombie workshop. We have a why, uh, um, I say, um, raptors of the Rocky um, wildlife, inspired wildlife the filmmaking workshop. Videography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have stop animation as a, a whole week and as its entirety. So we're going to be working on big projects during stop animation week. But of course, if you want to um, even find more information about that and where we post all our stuff, you can go to our Facebook page, you can follow us on Twitter, and of course... You can like Wake Up Missoula on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. You can check out Wake Up Missoula on Facebook. And to check us out, we've got our own website, Wake Up Wix, uh, let's see, it's uh, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. Yep, so nice we made you write it out twice. It's But you know, if you type in Wake Up Missoula in Google, we are uh, the first four things that pop up. We've got our Facebook, our Twitter, our YouTube, and our own website. Mm -hmm. They all pop up. So just type us in in Google if you can't find us. Yep. So we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um, we, I know I was going to do events after mm -hmm. I show this very last clip of what is um, new on MCAT tonight. It's not necessarily new, but there's just a lot of different things happening tonight on MCAT, of course. If you uh, want to watch... Um, ooh, where is that? <laughs> Sorry, I just have to find it. I can find it and like okay so this uh, let me just set it up it's a little bit of the <coughs> odyssey of the stars mm. and it's um, basically it kind of like um, it, it's to celebrate um, artists who brought a lot of art and culture to um, the, the world and, and they're basically one the one of the catches is that you have to be an alum of the University of Montana last year that we had that one lady who's a casting director yep we did a lot of stuff for um, Native Americans yep. and th this year we had a um, George Gogus, and he Gogus. is an artist. Yeah, and so what the premise is, is of, of Odyssey of the Stars, there's lots of different showcases and performances from the Performing Arts School at the university, and then they honor one old alumni um, that has done something for community, as Scott has said. Yep. So this year was George Gogus. Yep. So let's listen to some opera um, for George. And when we come back, we'll have Noah with the event, so stay, stay with us. Happy Friday. I've got some events for you. So the events that I'm going to be telling you guys today, these are kid events, music, and some international wildlife film fest movies. So up first, for during our day activities, are things that you can do with your child or bring your child to. So up first at 9 a.m. is parent yoga. This is yoga for you and your children. So if you don't have a babysitter and you really want to get your yoga on and get your fitness on, you can bring them by. Do your yoga, and then you can just kind of chill in the corner. Yeah, most of the time I hear that the kids are really good and that they kind of go with the same energy of the room, and so they just chill. Kind of nice. So it's every Friday, 9 to 9.45, and the sliding fee is only 3 to $10. 
at 9.30 over at the YMCA is our family fun time. Um, and so they have nice comfy couches and chairs for the parents and then they have different activities for the children. It's included in your membership or else it's $17 with that. We have family fun time at Mismo Gymnastics. That starts at 9.30. There's an a open gym for ages walking to 12 years of age. Um, and then at 10.30 over the public library is Tiny Tales. Uh, this is for babies ages birth through three years. They sing songs, hear nursery rhymes, and finger plays and stories. Yeah, you. <laughs> Scott loves it. <laughs> I love it so much. And then we have our older crowd. This is family story time. It's at 10.30, also at the public library. It's in on the dragon rug, and I'll have a theme story time, which may also have songs and an art activity. So get your teens together and have some story time. Yeah, even though this is for little kids, not teens. <laughs> <laughs> Young teens, pre-teens. -pre yeah. Uh, over at Roots Acro Sports Center is their preschool playgroup at 11. This is for ages walking to five years. They set up different activities and stations around the gym, and parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Up next, over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, we have flower planting that starts at 11 until 11.30, so they're going to teach them all how to plant flowers and what flowers to plant. Over at Spectrum Discovery Area, uh, their discovery bench is geology and their brain lab is brain games. And it's free admission all day long. That's great. Most of the time it's about 3 or $4. Over at Taste Buds Kitchen, starting at 3.30, they have an Earth Day cooking workshop for ages 2 to 6. Um, they are going to be making the sugar cookie a worldly upgrade by adding colors from around the globe. It's only $20 per child, parent child pair. At the Children's Museum of Missoula from 3.30 to 4, they have Milk Jug Sun Catchers. And if you guys don't remember making those when you're younger, it's a, it's a blast. So bring your kid back. At the Missoula Public Library at 3.30, we've got Teen Writers Group. This is for uh, teens between grades, I think, I do believe it's through 6 through 9 or 7 through, no, 6 through senior year, something like that. But um, they give and get good feedback and, you know, it's like a creative writing thing. Yeah. Cool. We have spider feeding at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium at 4. They're going to feed Rosie the Chilean rosehair tarantula. And I still have yet to see that. So if any of you guys have seen it, let me know. Take a video. I want to look. Or I'll go one day. Look out. <laughs> I'm coming to watch you feed your spider. Woo! <laughs> and it works perfectly with the music. Yeah, it really does. Great. Thanks, Thanks Asa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, over the Barn Movement Studio at 4.30 today is Ula. Ula is Dance Mania for the Soul, and it's like Zumba, but it was patented and made in Missoula. Yeah, so it's just like cardio workout, dancing, getting cray. <clears throat> um, over at the Sister Rita Mud Activity Center, uh, which I don't know where that is. That's cool. It's Family Fun Night starting at 5. Um, so they have food and refreshments, and they have a, both a silent and live action for treasures bought for the families of the Missoula Catholic Schools, as well as the local communities. Okay, so it's put on by the Catholic Schools. Great. Sister Rita Mon Activity <clears throat> Center. Sing it, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Rita. Sister Rita. La la la. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that one song. Um, I can't think of it now. I've been watching this one show and it just sort of threw me off because all the like popular songs they have like uh, different iterations of them. Oh, really? And then like all the words I just like forgot from the original melody. <laughs> like, oh god. <laughs> now that's what I call a ripoff. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a couple more events going on. Uh, at five at the public library, we've got intro to Java programming for teens. Um, if you want to learn how to program and use Java for programming, this is the class for you. It's just from five to five fifty. Open to those ages thirteen to eighteen. Call seven two one two six six five. All right, and now we've got our music for the evening. Starting at six at the Union Club is our Irish music session. Uh, Charla Bondman is going to be playing the Missoula Brewing Company at 6. MZ and Silas will be playing the Montana Distillery at 6. Over at Glacier Ice Rink, they're having a disco, state, disco skate that starts at 6. Top Hat Lounge has got Family Friendly Friday with Andrea Harsell. That's at 6. Um, <clears throat> over at the International Wildlife Film Festival, well, at the Wilma Theater, <laughs> Put on by the International Wildlife Film Festival is an Earth Day party with the Whiz Pops. Uh, it's only $5 and kids are free. 
John Floridas will be playing Imagination Brewing Company at 6. Uh, there is a 40th annual Kiyo Pow Wow at the University of Montana Adams Center. That's happening all weekend. Starts today at 7. Um, and then 406 will be playing at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. Idle Ranch Hands will be playing at the Union Club at 9.30. And the Hasslers have their album release party at the Tap Hat Lounge at 10. So that is what's going on in your community for your Friday. Um, up next, we're switching gears. We're going over to Musical Notes with ASAP. <laughs> That's always fun doing those little songs. Anyway... Before there was Ringo Starr, there was our guest, the greatest drummer that ever lived, Bernard Rich, known to the world as Buddy Rich. And you can see how handsome he was back in those early years there. Buddy Rich is known for his virtuoso technique, power, and speed. And as I mentioned, considered the greatest drummer to ever live. Buddy Rich comes, and he was born in Brooklyn to Jewish American parents. His parents were vaudevillians because they used to have like theater acts in those days. And his father first noticed that his son was different. And what I mean by that, he, he no, his father noticed that Buddy Rich could keep a steady beat at the age of one. Can you imagine that? And so they put him in the show. Buddy Rich started playing drums and vaudeville at 18 months. It's really amazing. And they built him as the traps, the drum wonder. And also, as a teenager, he was reported as the highest paid child entertainer in the world as a teenager. That's how skilled this guy was. He never took drum lessons. He, he always feared that it would degrade his playing. And I've heard that said about musicians who can't read music and stuff, but I don't think that's true. I think if you could learn your theory of music, it just shows you what you're doing when you don't know what it is you're doing, but can do it. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. <laughs> and Buddy Rich was one of those people. Let's show that clip of him in action, even though we won't be able to hear it. Watch his, watch his body. He's involved in a, um, a duel on the Muppet Show. And watch the reaction of this Muppet when he starts cutting loose, when Buddy Rich starts cutting loose. It's coming up right here. Look at that look. <laughs> now watch his body. Well, Animal is based off of Buddy Rich, isn't he? I think so. Because I know Animal is based off of a is off of a drummer, uh -huh. and I thought it was Buddy Rich. And can you imagine just playing like that all the time? I mean, look look at this. And of course, if we were able to hear the sound, it's just really amazing. But everything that Buddy Rich ever did when he did his drum solos, it was like this. It was just so intense, just absolutely intense. What this man did all his life. Now, he got his first job playing jazz in 1937. He played with Bunny Berrigan in 1938, Artie Shaw in 1939. He played with Tommy Dorsey in 1939 to 42, 45, 54 to 55. He played with Harry James in 1953, 56, 62, and 64. But his most famous work of all time, if your audience was to look it up, he has a, a jazz version of Leonard Bernstein's West Side Story, which came out in 1966 on an album called Swingin', New Big Band. So, you know, your audience can look him up. And finally, as far as television appearances, in the 1950s, he, he was a frequent guest, guest, ah, guest, <laughs> guest on the Steve Allen Show, and especially the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He appeared on the Merv Griffin Show, and he did some PBS shows, and of course the Muppet Shows we saw him on. So. He was a well-rounded drummer and could do it all. Nice. nice. So I'll quit on that note right well, there. Awesome. Thanks, Asa. Sure. That was Musical Notes with Asa Fadonai, and we've got an art clip. We'll be right back after this. Yeah, go to the ma'am. Thank you. 
guys, we are back, and this is what's going on on Saturday. So for Saturday, I have got um, International Wildlife Film Festival movies, and then music for your evening. So that's uh, my little theme for Saturday. So up first, the first movie at the Roxy Theater is going to be called Living with the Carnivals, Living with the Carnivores, mm. and the second movie is called And Nile, the Ultimate River. So the first one, Living with the Carnivores, is basically going to be about living with large carnivores. It starts. Um, a decade ago, a decade ago, in Western Montana's Blackfoot River Valley, it explores how a rural agricultural community responded to the resurgence of grizzly bears and wolves. Uh, the next movie, Nile: The Ultimate River, is going to be talking about um, the Nile River, as well as the Lobelia scarlet tufted malachite sunbird that lives its life in the forest next to the Nile River. Yeah, and so that those will both be at the Roxy Theater at 11. Um, also at 11 at the Roxy is Living with Coyote. Uh, that is about coyotes and how can how they can uh, quickly change the quickly adapt to their ever-changing surroundings. Um, the next movie is called Wild Canada, and um, it is about Giovanni Cabalto, or uh, John Cabot, as other people know him, um, as he was attempting to find a new trade route to China, but he and his companions accidentally came to North America. Yeah. <laughs> so it's about that. Oh, that was crazy. <laughs> Crazy, crazy Europeans. Um, our next movie at the Roxy Theater starts at 11.30. It's called Joe. Uh, this is about this man who is a celebrated National Geographic wildlife photographer and spends his life embarking on adventures to the wildest places on Earth. Um, so he seemingly has a perfect life. Or does he? We don't know. Watch it's, the movie and uh, find out. Uh, uh, um, 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 uh, oh, that's what he said. Uh, it's uh, it's it's all it's Hallmark. Hallmark. Yes. Hallmark. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the next movie is called Brazil and Natural History, and they're going to be talking about how Brazil only has about seven percent uh, left of their rainforests, and how that is really not much at all. And going to be talking about the animals in the rainforest and how that is all affected. Um, the next movie, couple movies we have at the Roxy Theater, they start at twelve thirty. First one is called power of nature salmon um, and so this is about a forest the great bear roar rainforest on Canada's Pacific Coast largest temperate rainforest left on earth so they're gonna be talking about that and how um, the forest owes its existence to the Pacific salmon the next movie is called the sagebrush and this is about a sagebrush that stretches across 11 states in the American West and about the grouse and all the other animals that survive off the sagebrush. Our next few movies are going to be at the Roxy Theater at 1 p.m. First one is called Ulan or Ulan? I think it's Ulan. So it's the ancient lowland forest of Borneo have been destroyed at an unprecedented rate. So one indigenous Dayak community has clung on to the incredible hotspot of diet biodiversity and, um, and it believes by the power of a curse. So that sounds kind of cool. Yeah. The next movie is called Unnatural Selection. And this is going to be talking about um, how, let's see, humans have transformed the planet beyond recognition and how all these changes have altered the course of evolution. Our next movie is at the Roxy Theater at 1. It's called The Wolf OR7 Expedition. So if you guys hadn't heard about this, um, a while ago there was this wolf that was tracked that was uh, tracked by GPS collar. Um, and this young male gray wolf travels over 1,200 miles through Oregon into California. And he's the first and only documented free roaming wolf in California in nearly 90 years. And he's still out there. So that's a movie about him. Uh, the next couple movies at the Roxy Theater will be at 2.30, Medieval Monsters. Uh, this one is called, is about, this one's really cool. It's in the forest in England, and it's about, um, they use macro slow motion and time lapse techniques to reveal behaviors beyond the capabilities of human eyes. So it's like dueling dragon fry, du dueling dragonflies, acid firing ants, and jousting stag beetles take stage in the center of world of medieval monsters. So it's like super up close of bugs fighting each other. That sounds awesome. 
Um, and then the next one is called Planet Parrot, and that is just a book, a book, a movie all about parrots. That sounds great. The next few movies are the Roxy Theater at three. This one is called A Day in the Life, um, and they are talking about the Mayfly. The next one is called E. O. Wilson of Ants and Men, Ants and Men, and they're examining the life and career and science of famed Harvard biologist E. O. Wilson. Um, and then our last group of movies is at the Roxy Theater at 3.30. First one is called Power of Nature, Elephants, uh, Mega Gardeners of the Forest. They'll be talking about how uh, forests need elephants in order to stay healthy, productive, and diverse. Our next movie is called Making an Ancient Forest, Kalakapin National Park. This is in Austria. Um, and they're going to be talking about how they've relied on natural dy dynamics as far more than intricate and ingenious than previously imagined. Um, yeah, so they're going to be luring the lynx home. Huh. I don't know. That sounds great. <laughs> so that those two movies, all these movies I just talked about, they'll all be at the Roxy Theater throughout the day. So the last one ends at 3.30. And now we've got some uh, music for the evening. So at 4 p.m. over at Ten Spood Vineyard and Winery tomorrow, they've got a wine tasting live music by Way Cool Music. Uh, at the Roxy Theater from 5 to 8, after all of the awards, uh, the International Wildlife Film Fest will have the award films. So that'll be 5 to 8. Uh, at the Wilma Theater, De Zed's Dead and Unlike Pluto Pluto will be at 7, and that's uh, part of Socotra. I don't know if you guys have heard what that is, but it's some like electronic music best thing. So the people that are playing are Zed's Dead and Unlike Pluto, and then they will have, um, I do believe they'll have go-go dancers, as always. I forget what they're called. I don't know what they're calling themselves these days. I'm more like a go away dancer. Yeah, Scott's a go away dancer. Yeah, go away dancer. Go away dancer. <laughs> I do the guns a lot. <laughs> well, the sun's out. Guns out. Okay, all right. I'm back. <laughs> okay, so Joe Sullivan will be at the Missoula Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Malarkey will be at Imagination Brewing Company at 6. Kevin Van Dort will be at, uh, live at Brooks and Browns at 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn downtown at the park. Missoula Symphony Orchestra's season finale concert will be at the University of Montana at 7.30. Uh, absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander at 9. The Devils of Loden, Loden mm -hmm. will be at the Palace at 9. Gladys, Fr Gladys Friday will be at the Union Club at 9.30. Sunrise Saloon will be at the 4.06 no, will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. And the Dodgy Mountain Band will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 10. Woo. As always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, The Missoulian, or the independent for more of your community events. I get my information from MissoulaEvents.net so you can talk about or not talk about it, but you can read more into that and see other events that I did not name or talk about. All right, so um, it is 8.30, oh. and because it's 8.30, and that's why that's so special is that um, MCAT is live streaming. Hopefully now they're live streaming uh, the Supreme Court hearing yep. of the future of the mountain water. And you can watch it, and I'm going to show you a little bit of it right now. Um, you can go to our website. You go to MCAT.org, and you can see all these nice little tabs right here. It's All you have to do is go to Local Live, so I'll just zoom in a little more. You see this Local Live tab, you click on it, and then it brings you to this little page. And of course, this is if you want to watch the video in this small window, but I'm going to put it into full screen access mode, so it's going to be in this. So let's take a look. And uh, of course, always there might be a little delay. So we're just, it takes time. We're just getting our, our thing up right now. Look, I think I have to reload the page again after I plug in the Safari thing. Yep. There we go. Okay. So it should start. Here it is. Right now? Allegedly. 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 Uh, See? Okay. So. Yeah, well, this is kind of what you're seeing so far. It's just starting to get together, and, yeah. and this is, uh, where is this? This is, I believe, at the University um, Center Ballroom. Okay. And, you know, all the curtains are drawn. It's really dark. It kind of makes it an intimate feel, because most of the time it's open, and you're like, oh, this place is very familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this is, usually they might take their sweet time on letting things happen, and... Yeah. <laughs> Still, still definitely oh. loading. 
Who's that lady? What's she doing? Why do you just show up? <laughs> <laughs> but just so you guys know, if you're having internet trouble watching this at home, it's it's your internet. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we're, we're streaming it just we're fine. We're streaming it just fine, yeah. It is your internet. Yep. <laughs> we're not sorry about it. We're not sorry at all. <laughs> <laughs> but this looks good. So if you guys want to tune in, um, good Scott, morning. how long is oh, that going to be going They just for? started. Okay. So let's let's tune in for a few minutes. My name is Rex Rank. I'm the Deputy Clerk of the Supreme Court. And if everyone can find a seat, uh, we'll get the introduction started. Uh, as a reminder, you'll probably get a few of these. Uh, the court will be in session, uh, so please silence your uh, cell phones as we get going. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm Martha Williams, and I teach at the Blewett School of Law here at the University of Montana. And, by, and on behalf of the university, it's a privilege to welcome you to the Montana Supreme Court's hearing on the City of Missoula versus Mountain Water Company, Carlisle Infrastructure Partners, and the employees of Mountain Water. The court's tradition of holding oral arguments at our universities and now in other parts of the state demonstrates how extraordinarily accessible our government in Montana is. I want to thank the court for inspiring confidence, confidence in the judiciary. And by holding this oral argument at the University of Montana here in Missoula, where there's so much interest in this case and where it hits close to home for many of us in the audience. At least one lawyer in this room remembers sitting just like some of you as a high school student watching the arguments unfold and then again as a law student about to graduate only to fulfill a dream and sit today and get the chance to argue before the Supreme Court. We all hope that the oral arguments today will inspire you to go on and study law, practice law, and perhaps some of you come to the Blue at School of Law and grace us with your intelligence. So for the want to be, the soon to be, and the non-lawyers in the room, I will first introduce Montana's constitution, then the three... All right, there you can see our live stream, and we have a special guest today. It is our very own boss, Joel Baird. This is our right. boss man. This is our boss, boss man. man, Joel Baird. How do you do, morning show viewers? <laughs> so, um, tell us about the new and exciting uh, thing about what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. So this live stream, um, you know, the gravitas of this situation, having the uh, Supreme Court hearing for the City of Missoula versus Mountain Water mm -hmm. oral arguments. Um, for and against the city's condemnation of the water distribution system. It's being heard before the Montana Supreme Court up at the University UC Center Ballroom. Yep. So we were so worried it wasn't gonna work, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> that we added a second layer of um, safety to, mm -hmm. to success, Good. and that is cellular bonding. What We're bonding that? cellularly. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you, what is that? we were talking about this when we first got the Teradek as yeah, well. We that's were just right. like, like, oh, we just use the cell phone service rather than rely on yeah. the, the shoddy internet that yeah. we may not have because yeah, we had sometimes. an issue. There's, and sometimes it's unfair to call them shoddy, but they're organizational issues with institutional networks, yeah. right? So the University of Montana, I'm sure they have a wonderful network, but sometimes there's firewalls in there, or we've yeah. had wonderful well, especially experiences with, with I mean, Missoula County Public Schools, right? Yes. We want to do live sports from Sentinel High School, where mm -hmm. we have our Sentinel Media Academy, and then some days we find it works, other days we find it does not work. It's because yeah. they want to be. Uh, they want to be. You got to be safe. Lower right? liability. Yeah. They, like yeah. it's like we just Firewalls. block everything. Block everything. And yeah. you know, don't worry about it. And even if yeah, it's yeah. So this cellular bonding service that MCAT's going to offer all the area civic groups, nonprofits, and what have you will enable us to go live from any location. We could go live from the M. That's we could great. go live from the top of Waterworks Hill. 
where you'll be doing this show in the next season. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can go live <laughs> from um, the, the university center. That's right, right. like we're taking a look right now at the introduction to the court case uh, before the Montana Supreme Court. Yeah. So this is an educational opportunity too, right? Um, the court is up in Helena. Our state is large, it's sparsely populated. So anything we can do to try to bridge the geographical divide, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. not just the digital divide, seems like a plus for everybody involved. So some of the more exciting things we can do with cellular bonding is uh, parades right out there on the street at the best location. Because so far we've been um, getting our um, ethernet, we can get it hardline yeah. from the um, yeah. Western Montana Community Center. But now we're free. And so explain <laughs> the concept of cellular bonding. What does that uh, mean? How does this work? I don't think it's that interesting about... But I, I, guess like, the, I guess the simple way to describe it. Right, it was just like you're How using cell work? phone service because it says yeah. Verizon on yeah. one of the ports, so it's kind of like an AT and T on the other, right? Mm -hmm. So it's using the cell phone towers to transmit the data, but because the data is pretty large, you know, like a lot of people do face time on their iPhone or yeah. some other application, it can get really sketchy and interrupted and so yeah. on. Using cellular bonding, it's a computer that juggles. So if it senses that one area is getting slow in transmission, it switches to the other one. Mm. If Verizon has a cell phone tower problem over here, it'll switch to AT&T over there. Oh wow! So yeah. it hooks up, like most people have like one modem, right, on the computer. Mm -hmm. This one has four. Wow. Because I remember that, awesome. um, last year we did a panel at the, um, the Doubletree. We, oh. they, they, they had no hard line. So no. it says like, okay, you must use the Wi-Fi. Yeah, but everybody, like everybody, else. everybody else was using the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and it got overwhelmed, it, right? Right? And yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and people complain, and we yeah. weren't able to successfully stream it because everyone else was on the Wi Fi. Yeah, but something people in uh, watching have to bear in mind is that every computer is a different reception problem. Mm. So, for the Supreme Court um, hearing oral arguments that's going on right now, we've had a number of phone calls from people saying, I'm not getting it while we're looking at it. Yeah, so yeah. it could be a problem with their computer at home. So, it's kind of like um, we're in a wonderful world, right? Where more things are happening in a year than happened in the last hundred years or something. But yeah. a switch between platforms. A lot of people are watching TV and we know TV is getting outdated. But when they go to their laptop or desktop and they want to use that like a television, there's some glitches in the system. So that's yeah. too bad. But I want to remind people of the success you guys had with Downtown Dance Collective, right? Yeah, yeah. Dancing that worked with the like stars. a charm. That was very I watched successful. it from home. I was totally satisfied with it. Yeah. And yet, when it came to work the next day, there were like three or four people like, "I didn't get it. Your system stinks," yeah. or so on. Yeah. And like, they well, blamed us, but we were the successful messenger. Yeah, I mean, like right? I, I, I was constantly checking my phone to see the, if there was still a live stream. And you saw the live stream was perfect. I yeah. could hear it fine. And there yeah. were like four hundred, five hundred people tuned in. Yeah. Like mom. Ma Hundreds of people tuned in, so like to, obviously it has nothing to do with the amount of people your, watching it. Any, there yeah. can be any amount watching yeah. it, yeah. but it's all about like a personal. What's going on in your house? What's going on? What's your going house? on in your institutional <laughs> network? Yeah, right. So <laughs> it's just, I guess, it's growing pains or shifting pains, yeah. you know, yeah. from a TV-based dissemination of information to an internet-based, mm -hmm. right, where a lot of stuff was picture and text, picture and text, mm -hmm. to now like the demand for movement and sound, yeah, that, I know. which um, puts a strain on every system. Because yeah. like uh, Google, every every year they like they pick like six, like 10, 15 towns to put in their Google Fiber to oh. help like yeah. bring the internet up and up, up like Infrastructure is <laughs> a major problem with this. Like it seems like magic, but it's based on hard labor yeah. and figuring things yeah. out. Because the, the people who yeah. promise that, that they have the highest speed internet is chartered, our cable yeah. provider here, yeah. is that they say, okay, you're going to get 60 megabytes a second. Yeah, that's right, downloading. Yeah. And then, of course, uploading is another issue. Yeah. And we're uploading all the time from yeah. Downloading is yeah. fast, uploading is so slow. Yeah, right. it really is. They may but promise 60, just numbers You know, yeah. people could compare. You, the a provider may say, you're going to get 60 coming down, but if you want to upload stuff, video and so on, you're only get like three or four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the ratio, like 15 to one. So it's mm -hmm. an interesting age. But if people are watching and uh, they're part of a group, civic group, what have you, um, nonprofit, and they say, wouldn't it be great to live stream my event out yes. of the old barn? down on the street corner. Anywhere. Yeah, give us a call at MCAP 542-6228 and we can talk about this live streaming. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's somewhat expensive, right? We have to pay for the data transmission and 
to make sure it works, we're now taking it from two sources, AT&T yep. and Verizon. Yep. And th this coordinating, the computer juggler mm -hmm. that makes it all happen, another $100 a month. And so we still have our media assistant grants, we but if you indeed. want the live stream, that's going to be something completely different now. Well, really the same, unless you consider paying money for something completely different. Yeah. Um, in order to defray the costs, um, and I did a little impromptu survey mm -hmm. on this, I got 40-ish responses asking various nonprofit groups with whom we've um, done collaborations yeah. in the past, could you guys afford fifty dollars you know each time you used it to defray the cost yeah. and and the response was overwhelmingly positive awesome great so we'll probably be releasing some protocol on it right yeah but so much better than where we were before yeah. where we just don't know if that yeah. thing's going to work and and we were suggesting that we'd ask people to go to their it people in organizations mm -hmm. right and say this is the MAC ID of our sender. You have to make sure it's whitelisted and you have to sign a quality of service yes. to it. And they're like, ah, what are you talking about, right? And, and then, then, we, then we get them like maybe like a, a week or two. Yeah. And we'll be like, uh, but most of the time, one of the issues um, with people who want us to go and film their event, especially live streaming, yeah. is that they always ask us maybe a day or two in advance. Yes. Even if it's a week in advance, it's still, uh, you we still, still have need to, time to set up and figure yeah. it out and yeah. go in there and look to see what we need to do. That's right. But you guys, on a different note, today is MCAT's 26th year Isn't anniversary. Isn't that something? Yeah. I know. Thanks, Noel. I totally yeah. forgot. I remember this morning. Yes, 26, 26 years. 26 years ago today on Earth Day mm -hmm. in this very uh, converted, very same converted studio garage. MCAT yeah. made its first uh, live cable cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Everybody so, was here just to kind of like be right. on the camera going, hi. How is it going? <laughs> Not sure. Uh, that's right. <laughs> there were a bunch of people in the corner turning, uh, you know, cages to generate the electricity yeah. <laughs> so that it would work. Uh, they go in the back room and just say, "Hey, how are you doing back here?" Yeah, like, right. I'm doing fine. I'm switching cameras. Yeah, I mean, it was a, really an interesting vision, and what better flower for the vision that this morning, 26 years later we are sending a signal live from a hearing of Montana Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah. So How great. the people back then couldn't have imagined the glory we face today. It's you true, know? But it's, it's true. kind of true. And the live streaming capabilities, I think, are just oh, really important. Stars, and they, you know? Yeah, and are really propelling us. And The people that started MCAT, advocated for MCAT in the early 1980s, many of whom have passed away by now, would have pooped themselves yeah. if they saw what this technology could do. Yep. And, um, you know, I was looking at the the live stream up at the UC ballroom, you know, before the proceedings started. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's Will Snodgrass and Larry <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's Jim Vallejo. Yeah. Oh wow, Jenny Miriam's got there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in a way, when we talk about these um, technologies being employed in a medium-sized city like Mon Missoula, it really points up how it does create a sense of community, right? Because everybody's yeah. playing with the same toy or a faction and people mm -hmm. are like, ah, this is going on. So that's kind of a warm, mm -hmm. yeah. And Not quite fuzzy, but it's warm. <laughs> it's warm. And we're also, yeah. besides like streaming on our local live channel, we're also going to try to plan on streaming YouTube, Facebook, right. all those like live streaming. We can channels. simultaneously stream with this technology to our Facebook page, to YouTube, to yeah. live stream. So that if people get confused and they hear in the grapevine something's going on, if they go to one of our outlets, mm -hmm. they'll be able to find live streams. And the really cool Great. thing about live streaming on Facebook is that everybody who likes us on Facebook gets a notification of the live stream right on their Facebook page. Yeah, that's yep. right. Being Another thing, you know, so, so, so what's a big deal about going live is its interactive possibilities, mm -hmm. right? Like Downtown Dance Collective shoot that you guys did, the package you put together for them was a really good example of that technology because it had that interactive. People were voting on the best dancing couple in real time. Mm -hmm. yes. So for that to happen, they had to have a two-way communication with the location, which was top hat. Yeah. But imagine other places out there that want to do like a call-in show about some issues. They could do it right from their office. You, it could be done like from a campus dorm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, that's something for people to put yeah. their imagination oh, that's so to. So exciting! But let's, let's switch gears. We only have about um, 
so much time, but let's talk about uh, you know, the last um, two episodes of Missoula Live. Yes. You also do a morning talk oh, show. Oh, you mean for no, the he season? Does a, he yeah. does for an the afternoon season. talk show. Yeah. Yes, Joel does an afternoon talk show. It's yeah. every other Monday, channel 189 at uh, 4 p.m. Right, and then it repeats every day for the next 13 days mm -hmm. at all different times of day. So if people go to MCAT.org, put in Missoula Live into the VOD search schedule thing, mm -hmm. they'll be able to check out all the times. And of course, Scott puts it up on YouTube. Um, yeah. Right after it's done. Yeah. And so you've got two episodes left of your season. Of the season. Who are some of your featured guests? I haven't a clue. No, <laughs> it's all about a, it's a yeah, cornucopia of nonprofits. But the um, you know, it's not all about like social service or whatever. You know, there might be people about um, land acquisition for open space. There might be. Uh, people coming from the government to talk about, yes. oh, I know this, um, Susan Renault will be coming to talk about the mm -hmm. Memorial Day observances. Oh, yeah. Great. And yeah, oh, there's someone that. else. I can see them right at the top of my list, but I can't remember who they are. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that that will take a summer hiatus. Yes. Hooray. Joel is very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, it will nice. it would come back in September. Summer's when things get busy for me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but you guys have done a remarkable job on this show, too. Let's hear it, people. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And ASAP. Thank you very you much. told people, right, that ASAP volunteers his time yes. to play piano and enhance. It's my pleasure. It's and, my pleasure. And he. He gets here early in the morning, three days a week, mm -hmm. to bring a little beauty into this sacred space, yep, our garage true. studio. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, you know it. Um, I think, um, too, we should remind people how to find this Supreme Court live stream. Right. All right. Yep. You may want to reload that so it doesn't have the so. irritating ring around the collar. So you basically <laughs> go to MCAT.org. Right. You see this page. You see yeah, this like page. us on Facebook. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? It's great. <laughs> it's right uh, do your summer camp program. All you got to do, so let's zoom in a little more, is yeah. you go to our local live tab right on MCAT.org. You click on it. We'll zoom back out. Yeah, zoom and of course, out. you can click on this button and it will play. But of course, you can always do the full screen as easily as just going to, and it brings up this little page, yeah. and you can just put full screen, and then you can start listening to it. Well, she still has a ring around the collar on this device, but each device is kind of yeah. behaving differently. And that's mm -hmm. that's one of the challenges, right, that, that each device is going to have a little different approach to um, video live streaming these days. Yes. There, I think you yeah, cleared it, right? Now, it's only I guess it's only when I like pause it, then I play it. Yeah, to pause it and replay it, but there you go, without the ring around the collar. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So, so this, uh, once again, people in TV land are the opening uh, contextual um, introduction yep. from the Blewett Law School at the University of Montana. Yeah. Well, so at 9 o'clock, right? Yes. It will go on for three hours. 9 to noon, we'll <laughs> yeah. hear what happens with the fate of our water company. We already have it, but now we have to take it back. Right. Well, um, <laughs> it's 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 all over the place. It's not it's not that complicated. But here's here's what's going on this morning in a nutshell. Um, the city of Missoula, um, you know, uh, initiated condemnation proceedings against uh, the water distribution company Mountain Water. They really wanted to acquire it and say, we feel like the population is going to be better served if the city owns the distribution system. Right. So in order to to um, use eminent domain and the condemnation procedure, you have to prove, in this case to a judge, that that this takings for fair value, so you say, I want to buy it, I don't want to sell it to you, I'm going to make you sell it to me for yeah. fair value. And they say, no, get lost, I'm selling it to someone else. Yeah. And you're like, wait a minute, I will use my in imminent domain. And so this case was argued in the fourth district court before Judge Karen Townsend, and the city prevailed. Yep. The judge in this case said, um, I think your arguments for the greater public good are valid, and so I will support your motion uh, towards condemnation and buying the system for fair value. The opposing side, the Mountain Water owned by Carlisle Group, said, no fair, I'm appealing this decision all the way to... Supreme Court! Which is happening in a few minutes, people. So the justices there will hear sort of a summary of all the arguments that were advanced in the 10-day period that MCAT provided live streaming for, right? And then MCAT again provided live streaming for the valuation. So first there was, can we buy it? Judge, yes you can. Second there was, how much should we buy it for? So I, I, it's, 
and I may be misinformed, I think this uh, hearing of oral arguments is to either affirm or um, correct or deny um, the, the Judge Karen Townsend's decision mm -hmm. in the 4th District. Yep. So it's only about the ability to buy, but not about how much it should cost. That yeah. may be already established. Yeah, yeah. I, haven't even, I haven't even already read in the papers that Carlisle did sell the company to Liberty just like that. Another complication, people. And then, of course, yep. then they said in the paper that they quote they were quoted saying it was like, "Hey, we're we're out of this. We're we're out of this, man. This doesn't involve us anymore because they they you they, know, sold, they it. sold it and just like, oh, it's uh, like we have no um, you know, like jurisdiction, jurisdiction no dog in the in, fight, yeah. and so on. Yeah. So the, the world of finance is is extraordinarily complicated. Yeah. But um, if people want to watch it, it's going to be here all morning, right? Each side will, will talk for an hour, hour, and, and then the time changes. I just can't remember. But we expect it to be on from 9 to noon. Great. All right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for having me, you guys. Tune in. We'll be right back. Not at all. I ask you to sit at the edge of your seats, listen intently, and I appreciate this extraordinary opportunity we have today to watch this case in action. Lastly, turn off your cell phones. That was the, um, that was the end of the opening statement uh, for uh, the, uh, just kind of give a little bit of background on that, of course. Joel gave us a basic background of what yeah. was happening for us. That was good. Thanks, Joel. Thanks for being on our show. That was nice. But of course, it is uh, Flagship Friday, and it's time for us to show you uh, the Flagship Friday video of the week. But of course, this is probably going to end our show. So thanks for joining us, guys. Yep. Thanks to Joel for joining us this morning as well. And this is a sequel to Hoverboard Cop called Hoverboard Cop 2. And, and we'll for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ram. I'm Noah McFoy. Here's ASAP Fat 9. We'll see you guys on Monday. You know where? I think we lost him. Okay, let's go. This parking spot's taken. Run! Liners.
How you doing? Uh, I was attacked by the man in the black hoverboard again. What? But I thought you punched him into oblivion. Uh, my hoverboard was destroyed. But I made that out of the strongest material I know. Plastic. He somehow broke it. I think he had Thor's hammer or something. Just finished this prototype. It can only go in circles, but it has shielding technology. Also, it's really buggy, so take this. Here is your phone. What a struggle. I have told you for the last time, no more hoverboards in this station. But Chief, this is the way I fight crime. I don't care, those hoverboards have been a liability. They've been defunded. But you don't understand, the man with the black hoverboard is back and I have to stop it. Even if I did want to let you keep doing it, the politics are too complicated. They're just against hoverboards. But what? I just learned how to ride mine. Vixen, Vixen, I want you off that hoverboard now. But Chief, I'm just learning. Get off. What are you doing? I thought we were gonna be like hoverboard partners. I'm sorry, but the law is the law, and who better to follow the law than the police who enforce it? Um, I don't agree with that. Well, too bad. I have my second piano lesson now, so if I see you on one of those hoverboards again, you're gonna be more fired than when they catch on fire. Now get off that hoverboard! <sighs> my piano teacher says I shouldn't play piano while I'm angry. I saw you like two weeks ago. 20. 20 years. 20 bullets. One for every year I've been in oblivion. You killed my father. And now I'm gonna kill you. I said, hoverboard it. So why'd you kill my father? It was just <coughs> part of the job. What job? <sighs> what a waste. I will I guess I won't ever know who actually killed my father. But at least I got a new hoverboard. Well at least we can make a franchise out of it. Good idea. 